Greetings, I am Pastor Eric Grable of Zion Lutheran Church and welcome to worship. Today we go ahead and talk about a calling story where Jesus goes out to find his disciples that will wander with him to learn from him and begin the work of the church. And in these stories today we hear themes of fishing which was a common occupation among his disciples. A word of welcome to all who join us here today. Uh, if you are interested in having a worship guide, you can find one in the description below this video. A special announcement to members of Zion Lutheran Church to keep an eye out in your email for information about our annual meeting. It will be electronic this year, and so you'll have a link that you can use to find your computer or smartphone to join over Zoom. We will also hopefully have a way for people who want to use their telephone to participate in the annual meeting. And so, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Kyrie is number 152 in the ELW. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on a sackcloth. sackcloth. When God saw what they did, they turned the, how they turned from their evil ways. God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in exhortation. Robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That both power belongs to God. Steadfast hope belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now let us prepare to hear the gospel message. The gospel acclamation is ELW number 172. that Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I'll make you fish for people. And immediately they, they left their nets and followed them. As he went a little far farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in a boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Fishing was a pretty common occupation among the people of Israel, especially if they were on the Sea of Galilee and were able to go fishing. And it was a way for people to make money along with being shepherds, farming, craftsmen, or that type of deal. And so Je Jesus went, goes ahead and goes to a couple fishermen. The key thing that we should note, though, is that while fishing was a necessity in the ancient world because it provided food for people who had other occupations in parts of trade, it was also seen as a scoundrel's job. 
you would see that fishermen would probably be out on the Sea of Galilee. They would smell like fish. Often they probably wore very little clothing because it was hot underneath the sun. And if they needed to, they could just jump into the water to cool off as well. Or sometimes they had to jump into the water to fix nets or do that type of thing. And so fishermen were kind of seen as rascals. You didn't want to spend time with them despite the fact that they were necessary for the life of the people around them. They were workers that were essential to the life of the ancient world, and yet they were not given the credence that they deserved. And quite frankly, what the work that they did was quite complex and had some training that required it beyond just learning knots. It also knew where to go fishing, how to do it, when to do it, and what is the best techniques and what are the fish that people need to do, need to get, or the type of fish that people want. I remember when I was younger that often in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan during the winter, you would go ice fishing. And so out on Lake Ogibbic in the Western UP, my dad would take me out to go ice fishing just off of a house of a great uncle. And one time we took a friend of mine. My dad has a tendency to like teaching and being very particular in his teaching. And I remembered when we went there, because this was a, this friend's first time ice fishing, that my dad took very special care in explaining how a tip-up works, or how you drill into the ice, or every other little detail that goes into ice fishing that my dad thought was important for my friend to know. The thing is, is that while our fishing wasn't necessarily a necessary thing, there is a sense that the people who are fishermen were pretty clever overall, but yet the rest of society did not see them as clever. They just saw them as fulfilling a necessary need and would close their eyes to how they got that need filled. And oftentimes the body of Christ closes our eyes to see what is going on underneath the surface of the world. And we do this and we ignore the work that is being done by our brothers and sisters in Christ who often go unthanked in different ways. And this can range from different small things that are done around the church to people who are out in the world doing work that we don't under, doing work that we don't see on a regular basis but are absolutely necessary for our world to function. And we kind of know about it. We think about it for a little bit. But as the body of Christ, as, what, as the body of Christ, we're called to be disciples of Christ, to see things through Christ's eyes. So going back to this story, what did Jesus see when he saw these two fishermen? Did he see just two workers who are trying to get somebody's next meal? Or did he see the potential for these people to become his students? And while we can probably feel a little bit awkward just because these two sons get up and leave their father with all the fishing nets and everything right there, which speaks to the weird charisma that Jesus has, the fact is, is that Jesus saw something in these two men. He saw that these two had the potential to go fishing for human beings. He called upon them spoken words that they would understand as fishermen, fishermen and then help them understand that he was calling them to something greater. And while probably they went on and fished at different times, and in fact in scripture, we do see some of the fisher folks in Jesus' core group go fishing on some days, whether it was to get extra money for the group or just to get sustenance, it's not very clear. But the fact is, is that this fishing that Jesus is saying is trying to bring about a mindset where we look at our, our occupations and what we do as something that could carry out the word of God. Jesus saw that two fishermen were perfectly capable of going out and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. They weren't necessarily extremely learned men. They might know a little bit of Hebrew here and there, uh, just enough to require, be required for their to become adults. But the fact is, is that these men were chosen instead of people with power, people with education, people with prestige, to be the primary carriers of God's word out into the world. And so as disciples of Christ, we have to understand 
that God calls us even to the most weirdest places and sometimes through the most unexpected people. And we're called as the body of Christ to see all people in terms of the work that they do as people who are given gifts or opportunities to share the word of God, regardless of what their occupation is, or regardless of the type of work that they are. And it's also to see that there is not no hierarchy to the importance of work, as much as we like to show it through diff paying of people. The fact is, is that in all occupations or in all jobs or in all vocations that we have, there is the ability for us to be followers of Christ. And that to be followers of Christ is not just something that we talk about over a coffee with a friend, but instead it is a part of our very livelihood going all the way to our daily work. And so as we think about what it is that we do in our lives, we also have to think about, are we carrying out our job, our occupation, our vocation in terms of what Christ has called us to do? To be disciples of Christ means to not just sit there on Sunday and be ready for worship, but to be a Christian means to carry out this identity of being the part of the baptized body of Christ all the way to everything that you do, whether it's your job, whether it's your relationships with your family and friends, whether it's with your political standings or with your perspectives in civic affairs, we are called to be reflective of Christ's love into the world, to see Christ actively working through all peoples in all places of this world. And so as Jesus calls his first disciples among fishermen, we are called to understand that we can at times be called in some very crazy ways, but also to be respectful and loving of the callings of others and to lift up and support them as they try to figure out what God is calling them to do. This is hymn number 817 in the ELW. I will be singing in English.
commanded by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for all the well-being of creation, that God rise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in just use of wealth, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcasts and all who wait relief, especially Rita, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, John, Sue, Rebecca, Max, Yolanda, Bill, Glenda, Betty, Joanne, Jeff, Iris, Linda, Rita Bell, and those we lift up to you now silently or aloud. Then in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For all military personnel, especially Tyler, Zach, Peyton, and Dakota, and for the leaders of governments that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for your ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us in salvation through Christ. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to take a moment to pause the video and share signs of God's peace. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke it light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and bright, brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word we you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgive us through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Go out and share the light of Christ. The sending hymn is in the ELW at number 536. Till we meet again Till we meet